On the 29th of April, 2020, the GOES-16 and GOES-17 satellites detected something unbelievable. This is your typical lightning bolt. It stretches a couple of miles into the sky and in real time lasts less than like half a second. But they didn't spot this. They spotted this, a single lightning bolt which snaked a world record breaking 770 kilometers in length. It stretched from the middle of the Texas Gulf Coast to nearly the coast of Alabama. Alabama. World record and lightning in the same sentence <laughs> kind of excites me. So naturally, I wanna know the physics behind it. How a lightning bolt stretches across three states. And is three even the limit? After chatting with meteorologists at NOAA and a bit of experimentation in my lab to test a few theories, it turns out the physics involved is straight out of Hollywood. This video is sponsored by Truebill. On normal occasions, lightning doesn't discharge distances this insanely massive. It will discharge 20 to 50 kilometers from cloud to cloud, or it'll just discharge from cloud to ground. Basically, electricity tries to get rid of built up charge as fast as possible in the shortest distance possible, usually. Um, it doesn't go very far. It's basically a hobbit. It's the same concept as a Van de Graaff generator. Static charge accumulates on the metal sphere up top. Once the voltage reaches a critical point, a spark discharge forms, draining away all the charge. That's <laughs> at least how discharges are supposed to work. So when the GOES-16 and GOES-17 satellites detected a discharge spanning more than 770 kilometers and lasting close to 16 seconds, that set the meteorology world into a complete spin. Major news outlets across the globe wrote about it for weeks. If you didn't hear about it, well, maybe you should spend less time on Tinder because it was literally world record breaking. Anyways, my first reaction was, dude, this is cool. But I began to wonder what exactly caused this, if it had something to do with the greys, or maybe even an imminent solar flare about to wipe out civilization. No! After a Will Smith level slap from other J, I wondered if perhaps the bolt was composed of smaller interlinked charges. Maybe it could be explained using series circuit theory. And if that's the case, then I think that a Marx generator could work as a proxy for explaining this phenomenon. And I'll, I'll get more into series circuits and Marx generators later. But first, I want to hear from the experts directly. So I got in touch with NOAA's National Severe Storms Laboratory and was synced up with Kristen Calhoun, the researcher currently studying the world's record lightning strike. And this is NOAA we're talking about. So I really wanted to pick their brains kind of from my perspective of high voltage physics. So I set up a FaceTime call for the next week. So I have a couple of questions that I've lined up. Can you tell me a little bit about this mega burst event? Or I don't know what the exact term is, but I'll call it a, a mega burst event. And I'm, I'm really curious how a bunch of small charges could possibly build up to be something that stretches almost across three three whole states. Yeah, no, it's super exciting. Um, so we have mega flashes and super bolts. Um, super bolts are more on the energetic side, which um, is measured more in the brightness. And then uh, mega flash is more on just the size, the parameters of how long uh, the discharge oh. goes on. Um, and it's one of our fundamental questions right now is understanding why these kind of flashes happen and how they get, kind of get kicked off. So the one that um, made the WMO kind of world record, what we do know is um, a little bit about the charging. So in a, like a thunderstorm like this, that you see these really large flashes, you have the squall line, which is kind of that line of leading convection where the updrafts are, where most of the like non-inductive charging goes on. And I can nerd out and we can talk about non-inductive charging. Hey, nerd out all you want. So my demographic is si people that love science and physics, so. <laughs> okay, yeah, so uh, most of the charging is going on up there. So what happens when it's really turbulent is you get lots of these small pockets next to each other of positive and negative charge. And right in between where that electric field is maximized, you get the lightning initiated. So yeah. that's what most lightning is. It's actually mostly, mostly these small flashes. Um, and that's really because of turbulence and it's just all very chaotic inside. It's so cool. And then um, out when you go into the, the stratiform precip area, so this is the area that kind of follows that leading line of convection. It's a lot more laminar. Um, we know charged particles will go from the updraft out into the kind of trailing stratiform. Um, so you imagine all that small ice that gets lofted up and gets mm -hmm. pulled back. Um, but we also think that there's local charging going on there too. So what happens is, is it builds up, it builds up, it builds up and something, and this is a huge question, what is that something, um, causes that 
kind of initial breakdown. And sometimes it's just lightning from the leading line that will connect out. But sometimes it starts out, and that's a huge question. We don't know why it starts out. And the, we have lots of theories of why it would start in this like more laminar area. Um, but oh. the lightning flash will tap into this like extreme reservoir charge, right? So that's what happened in this case. You had charge in this kind of long cloud going up from um, Arkansas across Louisiana and down to Texas. And once it hit it, um, continuing on that breakdown for the leader for the lightning is a lot easier than that initial getting that initial start. That is, that's a little bit of what I was thinking maybe was the cause for one of these, what was the term again? A, a super bolt? Uh, mega flash. Mega flash, sorry. So it's almost like the laminar section of say like tempered glass. You have a lot of electrical tension built up, but over a long distance and it hasn't had the opportunity to release that tension yet. So yes. Humory, what type of velocities are you looking at with an updraft that is going to cause some kind of initiation event like this? These supercell storms, we can get 30, 40 meters per second pretty easily in the updraft in the center. Um, and what is fabulous, this is part of my PhD research, um, We there's something we kind of call a lightning hole in these storms, because when it is so strong, when the updraft is so strong, it's driving all the charge up. Almost half of a hundred meter dash in one second, and that's the updraft. That's faster than terminal velocity if I was falling from the sky, I think, or close to it. Oh, that's no, insane. yeah, um, it, it's really fast, and that's why we get this like kind of lofted. You know, all these hydrometeors are going up so fast. Uh, are you familiar with Mark's generators? A little. These are not like when you get into all the plasma stuff. Um, that's not my fundamental like knowledge here. Was it a possibility of multiple built up systems? and uh, areas of high tension that once that initial spark happened it uh, fed and triggered the nearby uh, charge events that were just waiting to go so yes if you have the charge built up over a long area it essentially can be like a capacitor we know there's that initial like lightning breakdown where the you have that maximum electric field and the negative leader moves through positive charge the positive leader moves through negative charge um, so if you remove some charge now you have another area that could change, like you have a maximum in the electric field kind of in a slightly different area, that arrow is gonna, the vector is gonna point a slightly different way. Okay. And what that can happen is that can trigger, that can be enough of a change in the electric field to trigger a new flash. This is all so fascinating. <laughs> I love this, I love this so much. So the lightning physicist looking at it with an optical sensor would say, yeah, that's just one continuation. It's kind of that series idea. It gets to a thing, it changes the charge profile, it kicks off and triggers another flash. I, I'm looking at it, let's say I'm looking at it in the VHF radiation. I see this one stop, you might have a recoil leader. And then I see a new one start between another area of negative charge and positive charge. And the reason I'm gonna say it's a different flash is because we're no longer tied to that opposite, so leader. We discussed so much more than what you just saw and my patrons will have full access to the interview. You can sign up to support my channel for as little as one dollar and it all goes towards video production. So essentially scientists are still trying to figure out what the hell caused this, but there are two leading theories. First, a gigantic laminar area of tremendous built up charge which broke down and shattered like tempered glass. And second, it was more of a visual illusion because it was composed of several smaller discharges that were separate because they didn't have the same starting point. Both scenarios are fascinating and they're really easy to duplicate using my equipment. I mean, this wouldn't be plasma channel otherwise. But first I'd like to answer a question I continue to get on like a weekly basis. Just how much is my electricity bill doing all this? Well, Truebill helps me answer that question. Truebill is an all-in-one personal finance app which basically helps you save money by categorizing all of your expenses. It allows you to manage subscriptions, lower bills, monitor your credit score, build savings, and pretty much just understand where every single penny is going, which apparently mine all goes to Home Depot. My local acrylic store takes a chunk too. They reached out to me a couple of months ago. Gotta say I love the product so far because it helped me to realize that, guess what, I had a couple of subscriptions that I wasn't using that were just burning money. So the app helped me cancel those with just the push of a button. It's also helped me be more efficient with my budgets because it automatically monitors my spending in every single category. And it sends these friendly notifications when you've exceeded a threshold that you previously set so that you can know it's time to basically put down that credit card. To help you negotiate bills down in price, all you have to do is upload a photo of your bill and then tap a single button. 
This year, I'm quitting my job to focus on full-time video production. So knowing where every single dollar spent and where my finances are going is going to be super crucial. And that's why sponsors like this support my channel on so many levels. It's a super cool product. So if you'd like to try it out for free, head to truebill.com slash plasma channel or click the link in the description down below. Okay, so the first scenario where charge was built up over a large laminar area and it discharged all at once in one continuous sheet, well, that can be duplicated using a Van de Graaff generator. Well, um, one much bigger than this. The metal dome resembles a source for local charging and an acrylic sheet acts as a laminar area to accumulate that charge. Placing the acrylic on top of the Van de Graaff and cranking up the power, the local charge reaches such a high threshold that it eventually flashes over, forming large fractal discharges. You can clearly see the discharges fanning out to release the built-up charge in the laminar area. It's really cool. This actually happens to airplane cockpit windows flying through storms, which I shot a video on, and it's analogous to the process seen in Scenario 1. And Scenario DOS, where the Mega Flash was composed of separate charge events and the previous discharge triggered the next, well, that can be explained using a Marx generator. Marx generators work by combining separate high-voltage charges in series to create one massive pulse of voltage. These devices are built of capacitors, which store said energy, and resistors, which reduce and direct power, plus spark gaps. For my marks, I'm going to use freshwater resistors, built of tap water inside of a silicon tube, and saltwater capacitors, built of plastic jars and saline water. I mean, honestly, I just, I think water looks really cool and it makes for an easy build. Each jar represents a different segment of the laminar strato area, and these water resistors act like individual ice-filled updrafts, which charge up each portion of the strato. When everything's charged, nothing happens, but if the conditions are right and the charge reaches a critical threshold, the gap between the first two charged areas breaks down and ionizes. This causes a cascading event where each next gap between charged areas breaks down. Instantaneously, all of the charge sections are connected in series, adding up their voltages and creating a tremendous discharge. If you'd like to see a full DIY video on this, click the link in the video description. And disclaimer, these are just analogies to what Kristen was describing, but I really do believe that this helps explain and kind of visualize the science behind this super sick world record event. I mean, I love physics. Thank you so much for watching and drop a comment down below. Did this blow your mind like a blue mine? I mean, look, I'm still scraping mine off the wall. And also a massive thank you to all the people who continue to support my work. You stay classy.